core of experienced players, yet now when they're struggling, he needs them to step up. And the person that will be leading the way, Nadira Ricks, the senior, she's one of the keys. A lot of speed, a lot of quickness, and she will literally run the show for them. Well, Nadira just loves to play. She's an all-round player who is contributing offensively, defensively, assists, and also just became the Hoyas career leader in steals. She's their main player. She's the leader of the team, and she has to come up with a big game to beat the Huskies. Now, for UConn, couldn't be much hotter in December. Wins against Auburn, against Virginia. They shoot as high as number four in the national rankings. Tremendous high for this Hunt Connecticut team because that was just setting the stage for what's to come. However, puts a lot of pressure on a young team, and since they are young, they have a tough time performing that way every game. In the center, for them, quite literally, Rebecca Lobo prowling in the paint. They love to get the ball inside of her where they're going to almost always have the height advantage. Well, Rebecca Lobo, an All-American candidate, she's a marked player. Every time she steps on the floor, she's now going to have a double team and a triple team. She has to find a way to get herself more involved in the offense, as well as some of her teammates have to start scoring from the outside to relieve that pressure. All right, the Big East game of the week set to start. UConn, Georgetown, and several thousand rabid Husky fans chomping at the bit to get this one underway. It's starting lineups after this. It's the 25th anniversary Subaru year-end clearance. That means unbeatable savings on today's value leader legacy. Subaru has told its dealers the 93s must go. Right now, choose any selected front or all-wheel drive legacy and save from two to $3,000. Sedan, wagon, they all gotta go. And with savings up to $3,000, they're going fast. Use the cash as a down payment. With up to $3,000 savings, it's easy to drive home one of the most reliable, dependable cars ever made. Legacy, hurry to your Subaru dealer. With up to $3,000, you can't afford not to buy America's value leader. Subaru. Something big's coming to Giant. No bigger. I mean really big. It's new Super Deals. Now every week. Save on dozens of new items. Like Pepsi or Diet Pepsi. Pick up a case of 24 12-ounce cans at $4.99. Take home the value size of Snuggle Liquid at $3.49. Or try Snuggle Dryer Sheets. A value pack at $5.99 saves you $5.17. So save big. No really big. With Super Deals. Now every week at Giant. Say hello to Southwest Airlines. Hi, Southwest. Hi, Southwest. And say hello to Southwest Fares, like Cleveland. That's incredible. I've got a cousin in Cleveland. I'll go this weekend. And Southwest unrestricted fares are available on every seat. Every seat? Every seat. Every flight. Every flight? Every single flight. Every seat, every flight, every day. You're killing me. Just call the day, fly tomorrow. I got it. So, have we made a good first impression? Yeah, very good. It's about time. Southwest Airlines at Baltimore Washington International. Just plain smart. Welcome back to Gampel Pavilion in Stores, Connecticut. Before we get to the lineups, the public address announcer Chris Monahan will join us with a special honor for Rebecca Lobo. Rebecca Lobo, a three-year member of the U.S. Junior National Team, 91, 92, 93, has gotten tremendous exposure from those games, as well as she's one of the top centers in the country. And she is leading in uh, several statistical categories in the Big East. In fact, in, uh, in the top five and four of those statistical categories who we touched upon at the top field goal percentage as well as blocks. Well, I think league. this year she's really coming into her own. She has some better players surrounding her now so we can really watch what Rebecca Lobo can do. All right, let's head over to Chris Monahan now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Harry A. Gamble Pavilion and to today's Big East Women's Basketball Television Game of the Week featuring the visiting Georgetown University Hoyas and your University of Connecticut Huskies. Georgetown enters the game with an overall record of 6-5, and five, and the Hoyas are 0-3 and three in Big East play. Connecticut stands 9-2 and two overall, and the Huskies are 2-1 and one in the Big East. And now, prior to the introduction of the starting lineups, we have a special presentation. Please direct your attention to midcourt, where head coach Gino Oriema is standing with junior Rebecca Lobo. On December 8th, in UConn's 64-55 victory over Auburn University in Auburn, Rebecca scored the 1,000th point of her UConn career and will now be presented with the game ball, recognizing that achievement. She became the 10th player in the history of Husky women's basketball to reach the 1,000-point milestone. Currently, Lobo has scored 1,096 points in 69 games.
And now for the introduction of the starting lineups. First, for the, for the visiting Georgetown Hoyas. At guard, a 5'7 senior from Washington, D.C., number 21, co-captain Nadira Ricks. At guard, a 5'8 junior from Keyport, New Jersey, number 24, Colleen Hanrahan. At center, a 6'3 sophomore from Washington, D.C., number 30, Vanya Cook. At forward, a 5'8 sophomore from Cincinnati, Ohio, number 11, Trisha Pendergast. And at forward, a 5'11 junior from Marion, Iowa, number 25, Jenny Jacobson. Head coach of Georgetown in his eighth season is Patrick Knapp. He is assisted by Tom Orndorff, Terry Williams, and Gail Beatty. And now, the starting lineup for your University of Connecticut Huskies. At guard, a 5'5 sophomore from New Fairfield, Connecticut, number 21, Jennifer Rezati. At guard, a 5'6 junior from Hollidaysburg, Pennsylvania, number 32, Pam Burr. Four junior from the Southwick, Massachusetts, number 50, Rebecca Lobo. At forward, a six foot sophomore from Washington, D.C., number 33, Jamel Elliott. And at forward, a 5'9 senior from Newark, New Jersey, number 14, Captain Tanya Boo. Connecticut associate head coach is Chris Daly. Assistant coaches are Megan Patterson and Wendy Davis. And uh, we see Rebecca Lobo with the 1,000 uh, points. You know, it's funny, I talked with Rebecca earlier about that. I congratulated her this season. And she said, you know, I didn't even know I was close to 1,000. <laughs> she's the 10th to do so as we take a look at the comparison. She's one of the reasons, too, why their rebound margin is so high. Well, that's a place where you win and lose games. Against Seton Hall, they lost the game, and they were out-rebounded 45 to 29. As is customary here at Gampo Pavilion, the fans stand and clap until Connecticut scores their first point. And more fans than ever before to watch a Big East basketball game here at Gampo Pavilion. Joining us today, word from the Sports Information Department is that this one will be a sellout. Impressive record for Coach Oriema against Georgetown, as you see the numbers there. In fact, he's 15-3, and three, lifetime against the Hoyas. Georgetown in their road, Blues, UConn in the home whites, and quickly Elliott has it batted away and right on the first play. We see the speed of Ricks, number 21. Well, you get a which look for Georgetown's style of play is somewhat crazy. They're all over the court. Sometimes they'll do things you're not quite ready for, but they are very aggressive and quick. Both teams defensively pretty much constant harassment for 40 minutes as Weber puts up a three and hits it. Well, that's going to be terrific for Pam Weber's confidence. The guards against Seton Hall went four for 24, and the fact that she took that shot right off the bat with confidence is a good sign for the Huskies. And UConn will come out in the zone to test the outside shooting of the Hoyas, which has been suspect the last couple of times out. Shot from Hanrahan is no good. Rebound Elliott. And Rosati will push it up the floor for UConn. Lobo, turnaround jumper, baseline nails it. Coach Knapp said of Lobo, you cannot conceive of stopping her. You just have to try to limit her action. Hammerhand, nice move around Elliott. 0 for 2, not the kind of start she was hoping to have. Tanya Boone 
Coach uh, Oriema talking about being pleased with her play thus far this season as Weber drives and is fouled. That will go against Jenny Jacobson, number 25. Connecticut, a very disciplined team on offense. This time, Pam, really taking control, creating something for herself. Sees an open spot. Jenny just coming over a little bit too late. Weber gets a trip to the line. This is Coach Pat Knapp. The last time he played here in Campbell Pavilion was one of those two victories over Connecticut, a last second shot by a graduated player, Nikki Reed. Weber, 67% from the line, short on the first one. He was saying he really doesn't mind. In fact, he looks forward to coming up to play in this facility with a large crowd. Really no problem getting the players psyched up uh, to play before a sellout. And Weber hits on the second. Well, Georgetown 0 for 2 so far this afternoon. Talk about offensive woes. They have not gone above 40% oh, oh, oh. from the field in their last three games. Vanya Cook shot altered a bit by Lobo is in and out. Huskies look to run. Nice cut from Weber. Dishes underneath Elliott. Blocked and a foul will go against Cook. Impressed with the movement thus far, the Huskies on offense. Well, it seems they're looking to run. They don't want Georgetown to get set in their defense. This way they can catch them off guard. Pam Weber seems to be the open player right now. Good look down low to Jamel Elliott, who's been playing terrific this season so far. Just a sophomore for Jamel, second leading scorer for this Husky team. 64% from the line. And she hits the freebie. I was actually working with her foul shot, just rebounding for her yesterday, and I said, all right, Jamal, here's the situation. One second left, game's tied, you're on the line for one-on-one. -on -one. You know, got a good smile out of that, and by gone, she won the game. <laughs> she gets one of two, and the rebound to Ricks. She's the type of player, Ricks, you gotta stop her on the penetration, or she's going coast to coast, and there's the rejection from Lobo. Block for Rebecca, fifth nationally in that category last year. Shot from Boone, no good, and Cook has the rebound. Georgetown really has to break the ice here. We talked a little bit about the, the shooting problems they've had. And as I speak, Pendergast hits one. One of the things Coach uh, Knapp was saying though is they, they usually haven't had problems getting out of the gate. It's sustaining the offensive firepower that has been troubling them the last couple of times out. And he really doesn't have too many answers. They're just, the ball just is not going in the hoop. They're getting the shots he feels within their offense. Lobo hammered underneath by Cook, and that's two on her. This is probably the most I've seen Connecticut offense move and make the cuts. There's constant movement, no sitting around. They're looking for the open player, and if Rebecca Lobo gets the ball underneath, you're either going to have to foul her or she's going to score. We see Cook with two two quick ones here early on. Is there a problem in terms of depth for, depth for the Hoyas? Most definitely. If Vanya Cook is sitting on the bench with a couple of fouls, then Pat Knapp has to go to his, de his bench. Lobo hits on first. And there you see how much she means to this ball club. She's their, their heart and soul of the team. First seven games, she was averaging just under 22 points. Last four, just under 11 points. Hoyas trying to get something started. A bit cold early on. Jumper is good. Jenny Jacobson. <laughs> Last year's co-recipient of the team's most improved player award. Coach Knapp saying, mentioning her specifically as one of the players that has to help out Ricks with some of the scoring burden. And there's a rebound for Cook. And you see immediately Georgetown looks for Nadir Ricks on the outlet, takes it coast to coast. What an athletic move. Sweet scoop shot from Ricks. And there you see, you got to take away her penetration. Lobo calling for the ball on the block. Right around Cook. And there you see the foul problems come into play. Well, there is no way that you can defend Rebecca Lobo in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Virginia came out to do that, and they lost the game. Coach Pat Knapp said last night they're going to try to double-team her. They're going to play a lot of junk defenses. But you have one player. She senses the open, one dribble, and she's so mobile for 6-4. She's going to have a hell of a game if that's what she's going to be able to do. Hammerhand short on the jumper. Rebound Jacobson. 
Squirms in between a couple of players and gets it off the glass and in. She now has four and Jamel Elliott in pain on the floor now for UConn. It looks like she got the wind knocked out of her. I think uh, Jenny Jacobson in turning inadvertently hit Jamel. Might have caught her in the stomach. We certainly hope that she'll be up soon and that right now she's a little more scared than anything. Elliot, six foot sophomore out of the Washington DC area. And, and there you see Coach Knapp. We'll mm -hmm. take a see look at it. Catch it. There it is, elbow right in the stomach. That will certainly knock the wind out of you. Georgetown's on an 8-3 run at this point. And uh, Elliot able to get to her feet and a nice ovation from the crowd. Jamel Elliott plays with such heart and intensity. It makes her that much of a better player, and sometimes she catches teams by surprise. Carla Barubi, number 31 on your screen. One of the outstanding freshmen for the Huskies. In fact, she is the preseason choice for Rookie of the Year in the Big East. Well, I think they're going to have a tough time with that award. You Colin Porter, D.C., Mandy Saunders, and here's Tanya Boone. Rims out, and a three-on-three for the Hoyas. It's a fast break for Ricks, and she finishes it. Oh, she's a fun player to watch. She just loves to play the game of basketball. Just put the ball out, and she'll play. And she doesn't necessarily need the numbers because she's so creative on the break. And a tied-up ball, and it will go over to Georgetown. We are tied at 10 apiece. We'll be back after these messages. You know how fast your business is changing. But do you know which airline is changing faster than any other? Improving schedules. Modernizing its fleet. Forming a global alliance. Making so many improvements, it can truly be said. In the history of aviation, no other airline has made so many changes so fast. And all of it's for you. Of all the fine German engineering in a new Volkswagen, there's one advance not found on any other car. A device small enough to fit in the palm of your hand, but big enough to change the next 10 years of your life. It's a warranty. The longest limited powertrain warranty in the world. One part of Volkswagen Protection Plus. It's sort of like having headlights that see all the way into the future. Volkswagen, the most loved and protected cars in the world. And welcome back to Gampel Pavilion, tied at 10. We'd like to take this moment to commend the Soft and Dry Academic Award winners. Megan Donner from Georgetown, a senior in Regional and Comparative Studies, U.S. and Latin America from Burton, Virginia. Megan finished 11th in the 1993 Big East Cross Country Championships. And Teresa Roy, senior at Connecticut, mechanical engineering major out of Nashua, New Hampshire. A two-time All-America selection in the heptathlon. She won the gold medal at the U.S. Olympic Festival. Congratulations to the Soft and Dry Academic Award winners. One of the over 7,000 here at Gampel Pavilion. Not liking what they've seen in the last couple of minutes, though. But you see Georgetown on a 10-3 run in the last three minutes. Field goal percentage for Georgetown up to 50%, 5 for 10. So they're getting some good shots. That one, not exactly a good shot. Air ball from Pendergast. And Rosati the other way for UConn. Good defense inside as Lobo has it knocked away by Cook and Georgetown on the run. And there is Hanrahan there, so quick on the outlet. Well, what you saw was their defense creating some offense. They had the double team on, on Lobo, knocked the ball away, and it led to a fast break, too. Barubi threw the double team off the glass and in. Barubi muscling that one up. She was the female basketball player of the year by the Massachusetts Coaches Association last year. High school senior from Oxford. And there's a steal from Rosati to Weber. And a foul as she tries to finish it. The block will go against Trisha Pendergast, her first, as UConn tries to uh, beat the Hoyas at their own game on the run. Just the first uh, turnover for the Hoyas. 
Jen Rosati with a good anticipation, the good hands. Pam Weber drawing the foul and then bumps into the official, Dennis DeMeo. We're going to take a look at that previous play. Trying to dump the ball into Rebecca, you see the help from the DR Ricks coming from the guard position. That's what Georgetown's going to have to do, and the help is going to have to come from different areas so that Rebecca just does not know where it's going to come from. Weber now two of three from the line with five points. And for Coach Pat Knapp, a sweet 16 last year. Big upset over Penn State. And she gets both. She now has six to lead the Hoyas, five for Lobo. And there you see Shea Matlock, the freshman, coming in to replace Weber. For Connecticut, two freshmen, two sophomores, and a junior on the court right now. And Matlock harassing Ricks, and she'll be called for the foul. Matlock, 5'9", freshman out of Mays Landing, New Jersey, her first foul. Second team preseason all Big East selection. Good take to the bucket and the finish by Daniel LaForce. As she goes right around Lobo to the hoop. I don't think Rebecca expected that move. Daniel with excellent leaping ability. See the good first quick step right around Rebecca. Good call. And I don't think you have to remind the big people as you see Coach Ariema surveying the situation that they're playing against the Georgetown big girls, one of the top centers in the nation, and they'd certainly like to prove themselves. LaForce misses on the free throw. Berube looking for Lobo again, double and triple team. Ricks leading the break. And that's going to be a traveling. Shaking her head, but she took just a little too much time, an extra step before giving up the basketball. And another substitution, as you see Tanya Boone. Tanya with the experience. She's the uh, lone senior on the court right now. Wide open underneath. And she goes up and over Pendergast for the bucket. Good look from Matlock on that play. Back the other way, the Hoyas. Open is Jacobson, hard off the back iron. Quickly to Matlock. Outstanding take from Boone. Two quick buckets by the senior, Tanya Boone, and that's exactly what she's there for. Settle this team down, create some scoring opportunities. The force follows her own shot, and will get a trip to the free throw line for two. The force, a junior from Brooklyn, New York, and you got to remember, the first person you need to box out is the shooter because they know exactly where the ball is going to. And that one almost went in. That foul was on Jamel Elliott. That's just her first. Kathleen Deshaies replacing Ricks, who heads to the sideline. And Pam Weber is back in for Jen Rosati. Weber, Elliott, Matlock, Boone, and Lobo on the floor for UConn. And there's the first shot from LaForce. She's now one for two. Joining Jacobson, Deshaies, and Pendergast for Georgetown. Weber or Matlock really can run the show from the point right now in the lineup. Nice interior pass down low to Elliott. Rebecca Lobo, such an unselfish player, and they work so well together with a high-low combination. And that's the second or third time we've seen that little dump down pass along the baseline. Deshaies off on the three. Elliott to the floor for the rebound. Boone, good help defense from Georgetown. Since that uh, first drive by Pam Weber into the paint several minutes ago, it's been a lot tougher for the Huskies to move inside as we see Carol Walters, number 52, checking in for UConn, replacing Lobo. You see a little bulge in Kara's uh, jersey. She's wearing a flak jacket because she has a fractured rib. So that's supposed to protect her. We'll see how she performs. Elliott swatted away by LaForce. 
And a jump ball out of bounds underneath. We'll go to the Hoyas. The force with some extra lift. Whew. She got up on that one. 20 to 15, Huskies in front. Georgetown team still looking for their first victory in 1994. The running left-hander is good okay. from Pendergast. She has four. And they are getting some good balance offensively, not Rick's doing the job alone, and that's got to be encouraging for Coach Knapp. Don't block in there. Don't block. Walter's really calling inside. Off the glass and good. Kara Walter's showing some great improvement since first game I saw against Colby. She's really going to be a good player for this Connecticut team. You see, on both ends of the floor, puts in a bucket, then gets down for the good rebound. Boone. No good, and that is Julie Miles, 42, with the rebound. If the Hoyas press, they got a three on two. The baby hook from Miles over the 6'7 Walters. Julie Miles, co captain, along with the DR Ricks. Showing some leadership there. Taking a good shot and coming up with a good block. Miles working on both ends of the floor. And the Hoyas playing some inspired basketball. We'll be back after these words from our local stations. Hi, I'm Jim Moray. CNN Showbiz Today will spend a week behind the scenes of TriStar Pictures' new movie, Philadelphia, coming to theaters January 14th. And I'm Lauren Sidney. We'll talk with Philadelphia stars Tom Hanks and Denzel Washington, plus hear from Oscar-winning director Jonathan Demme. You'll get the first preview of this much-talked-about film on a special week of Showbiz Today. January 10th through the 14th, 5.30 Eastern Time on CNN. game of the week will take us to the Conti Forum in Chestnut Hill, Mass. Next week, Boston College hosting Villanova. Check your local listings for that one. And we're certainly looking forward to seeing another freshman, Holly Porter, against this Georgetown team. She had 18 points and 17 rebounds. So a new player that we can look out for. And we see today already a lot of freshmen in both lineups here in the first half. And I would imagine that's got to be encouraging for the coaches a few years down the line, bring a lot of good young talent into the Big East. Right now, UConn leading Georgetown 22 to 19 as we survey Ganpel Pavilion in Storrs, Connecticut. And if you're just joining us, this is, uh, we've been told by SID Barbara Koval, a sellout. Field goal shooting, just to let you know, UConn 9 and 0 when they hold the opposition under 40%. 0-2 when it's above that. So some encouraging figures right there for Georgetown. So not only that, but also they're much improved over the 33% for the last time they played. They're also getting five more shot attempts, which means their defense is creating more shot opportunities. Walters tied up underneath. Jump ball will go to UConn. And a freshman mistake there to bring the ball down on the rebound. Well, at 6'7", if Kara held it above her head, I don't think many players could really <laughs> jump at it. They'd have to stand on their shoulders to get up there. Rebound's dead even right now. Both coaches said rebounding was going to be a key for them. Out of the timeout, UConn coming with Lobo and Walters underneath. Nice move to the right by Walters. She's got four. What a nice move for the freshman. Confidence. Julie Miles misses on the three. She's got the green light to shoot from the outside. And the foul will go against Nadira Ricks. The crowd likes that one. This lineup for Connecticut is pretty intimidating. 6'4", Rebecca Lobo. 6'7", Kara Walters. 
Dewey Miles for Georgetown is their tallest player at 6'3", so a big height advantage. Let's see if Connecticut takes advantage of it. That was a foul. Chance for a three-point play. You could hear that slap over here, Beth. It got that upset the ball, you know? Rebecca loves this elbow shot. Because look who she has guarding her. A guard. Colleen Harahan at 5'8". Brought her hand down. And you could almost sense the whole crowd holding their breath when she got the ball as they all watched intently to turn and shoot. You could hear the slap. Seven and five, the number's on Lobo. Oh, Becker has had eight. double figures in 10 of the last 11 games. Four double-doubles and a high of 32, 31 points two times. But last four games, been a little bit of a scoring slump. LaForce skipping it over to Ricks. And before the shot, the foul will go against Rosati. There's some kind of a subtle thing with watching the deer. She knows how to draw the foul. She created that foul just by sheer driving, sensed a little bit of pressure, and really initiated the contact, but Jen Rosati was moving. And an open jumper, no good from Hanrahan. And a foul, and that's gonna go against Ricks, and that's number two. And for the Hoyas, that's their 16th foul. Looks like it's gonna be a one-on-one -on -one situation for the Huskies with 10.37 to play. That right there could be a very damaging factor for Georgetown. And Coach Knapp says they cannot afford to have Rick sitting on the sideline because she is so creative in terms of getting the rest of the players into the flow of the offense. Number five is Kim Better, a 5'7 sophomore. And she's short on the one one Lobo with the follow is good. In the double figures with 10. And that puts the lead at 10 for the Huskies. Huskies are like a different team here in Gampa. Dewey Miles with the elbow. They play so inspired. The crowd is like a sixth player for them. They're 6 0 this year at home. Let's see if we can catch Miles. Got it with the right elbow. And right in front of Mr. Official. Frank Geiselman and Dennis DeMeo are officiating today's game. Janelle Elliott, it's not a one-on-one -on -one situation because it was an offensive foul. The Hoyas with a run earlier, now the Huskies with the answer. So if you're Georgetown, you don't want to give Connecticut too much of an open space here. You want to kind of keep them in, especially at this point in the game, before the half. Keep your eyes, too, on the matching 21s. Rosati and Ricks, two of the Steels leaders in the Big East. And there you see Ricks with a pick. ESP coming in nicely there. And Rosati almost gets it back. And another scoop shot. This one no good. Lobo the rebound. Right in front of Coach Oriema, he's saying that it was Colleen Hanrahan who tipped the basketball. Dennis DeMeo calling it towards Georgetown. And it looks like Oriema's gonna lose this battle. And I'm sure at home you can hear the boos. A crescendo. Ricks fouled on the shot by Better. I think Gino's gonna need a couple of roll aids after this game. He may even take him at halftime. And what a job Coach Oriema has done with this program. 1991 Final Four, five straight NCAA appearances, three Big East regular season titles. And prior to his arrival, the Connecticut program had one winning season. And they are in the top ten right now in terms of programs around the country with wins over the last five years. They have the ninth best record in the nation. Rick's second shot in and out. Don't lock, we don't lock. 29 20 with 9 40 to go in the first half. We're at the Gampel Pavilion in Stores, Connecticut. Rosati short. Elliott with the follow. Lots of second chance opportunities here in the first half for the Huskies. 
just as fast and furious. We don't even have time to comment on the action prior. They're up and down the floor. Jen Rosati shot a little bit off right now, but you got to keep taking those shots. And the long bomb from Hanrahan to Jacobson incomplete. Just overthrows her on the break. And you can see Pat Knapp wants a timeout to talk about it. UConn 31, Georgetown 20. We'll be back after these messages. U.S. Air Reservations, how can I help you? Hi, how are you? How are you doing? Good, sir. You're traveling light. Did you have fun flying? Yeah. On the airline that's making changes faster than anybody. How for you? You enjoy your flight with U.S. Air. One thing will never change. Our dedication to you. Introducing the all-new Ford Mustang. It is what it was. And more. Welcome back to Gampel Pavilion. 9.16 to go in the first half. And coming up at the half, we'll have an overview of the women's season. Also, the Volkswagen Report. And it'll be tough to choose from the highlights of this first half. There's been so many of them, along with some first half stats. Rebecca Lobo working on a double-double in the first half. Well, we said she was going to be the factor. She's certainly breaking out of her scoring slump. Hey, she'll play a little point guard, too. Well, she loves to take the three, though. We haven't seen one yet today. The Hoyas, working player to player defense. There's a double. Good help from Jay, uh, from Pendergast, rather, and look at Ricks just blow by everybody for the layup. Turn on the Jets. She just put that in second gear, went right by Tanya. <laughs> Boom. I think she's probably got a gear that nobody else has on the floor right now. I think you may be right. Georgetown loves that open style of basketball. You know, they try to keep you off balance as much as possible. Looks like they're making a concerted effort right here, too, to get some isolation for one of the big people down low. And we've got a foul on the drive from Better. That will go against Colleen Hanrahan, the junior from Keyport, New Jersey. Kim Better usually known for her defensive skills. But here she's taking it to the basket, finds the opening spot. Well, it looks like a lot of leather there by Colleen Hanrahan. Tough call to make from underneath. That's Christine Sacco on your screen. Six-foot freshman. Better's been spending some time on the free throw line here in the first half. 64% foul shooter. Find him a lot in the computer room. The computer whiz here yes. in Connecticut. And a foul on the rebound. That's going to go against Jamel Elliott, number 33. Her second of the game. Well, Georgetown keeping it close here. Right now it's a 10-point lead, 32-22. But Coach Knapp has to be happy with the fact that his team is scoring points. The drought is over. Now he just needs to get in the win column. Of course, that's tough to do when you're playing Connecticut at home. Jacobson is good with the free throw. She has five. One of his major concerns coming is, well, as, as easy as it sounds, he was just wanting to score and keep the crowd silent as much as he could. And they've been able to do that in spurts here in the first half as Barubi checks back in for UConn. Now Georgetown with a little bit of pressure here. See if they can come up with some steals. Here, close. Ricks on Rosati. And there's the three for Lobo. Short on the shot. Good hustle from Boone to chase it down. Rosati all alone. Got it. Jen pointing to the good pass. 
that gives her some confidence there. You know, it's been a little tough. You miss some shots. Mentally, you get down. You don't want to take that next one, but you have to. She says, hey, Rebecca, here's how you do it. Let me show you. And she nails the three. 11 point now the advantage for UConn. Just under eight to go. And a blocking foul on Rosati. She certainly didn't like the call. Well, she's arguing her case, but we know that the, the men in the stripes, striped shirts are going to win. A tough call to make. Once Nadira makes that move, the defense has to be settled. Rosati, two fouls. And a gutsy move by Rex, too, because she's got a couple. That would have been three. First shot is good. Well, Nadira is the type of player who will just play. Eight points now for Rex, two for three from the line. He's actually fouled out of three games this year, so that's something, as we talked about, Coach Knapp is concerned. And right back with the pressure after the foul shots. Rosati, Boone, Elliott, Lobo, and Barubi in the white shirts for UConn. Sacco, Ricks, Jacobson, Vanya Cook, and Pendergast in there for the Hoyas. Nice move by Barubi. And we've got a foul on the rebound. It's going to go against Jacobson as she tried to clear Elliott out. Two of the better rebounders in the Big East going head to head right there. Jamel always finds a way to get good position. I think she's so strong, a lot of times she'll just move somebody out of position. The ball will go over their head is in, in that exact situation right there. Even though Jacobson was the inside player. Elliott with the one and one hits on the first. Jamel out of Washington, D.C. Now two of three from the line with six points. She had a 20.7 rebound, which was her career high against Virginia. She gets both. The lead back to 11. Working on a 2-3 defense right now. And there is Jacobson open for the three. Rosati with the long rebound. Boone will try a three of her own, and she gets it. As the Huskies open up their biggest lead of the day. Tanya Boone and Adira Ricks both played on the Big East Nike All-Star team, which went to Brazil in June. So they're very friendly, of course, off the court. On the court, they're both trying to win. Different story. Three on two for the Huskies. Rosati all the way. I really didn't want my husband to color his gray hair. But then I discovered this, the hair coloring called Just for Men. And now he looks better than ever. Apply Just for Men and in five minutes, rinse. No wonder eight out of ten wives prefer the natural Just for Men look to gray hair. It's like you took off ten years. With Just for Men hair color. And now, new Just for Men color gel for the hard-to-color hair of mustaches and beards. Brush in, rinse out, just five minutes. Time to hit the ice. Time to hit twine. Here comes Iron Flady. Score! Time to just plain hit. Time for the Capitals on HTS. Check your local listings for the Caps on HTS. And we're back to Gampel Pavilion there. The significant numbers in the first half as we get to the Big East Women's Notebook. Pitt and PC undefeated in the league. Seton Hall with the big upset on UCAN giving them a lot of confidence. And Indira Ricks are getting a look at her ability to uh, pilfer from the opposition today. Georgetown struggling from behind the arc. Out of the timeout, let's see what Georgetown is trying to get done with their offense. Looking inside, but not a good pass. Good defense from the Huskies, and Rosati will run the offense. Once again, Rebecca Lobo and Kara Walters in the game. 
left hook, no good from Lobo, and Jacobson has the rebound. Tough defensive assignment for her. She's losing about six inches on Lobo. Make it in zone. And a foul on Walters as Cook tries to go around the baseline. And they're gonna call that with the body. Lobo and Walters, number one, two in the Big East in blocks this season so far. It's uh, quite easy to understand why. I think the thing about Rebecca when she blocks a shot is a lot of times they'll recover the basketball. It's not a big swat and the ball goes out of bounds. She keeps it live. Here you see Vanya Cook, 66% from the line. And coming up short, coming off the loss to BC, but she certainly put in a good effort. She had a double-double uh, with 10 points and 10 rebounds. 6'3", sophomore from the D.C. area. She's led the team in rebounding five times this season. And she goes over on the strike. Kim Better. Lobo from just inside the arc is good. Two for Lobo. She's now got 12. She goes by assistant coach Megan Patterson in the all-time scoring list here at UConn. And remember, she's just a junior, so she has about a season and two-thirds left. Cook over Walters, and Walters has the rebound. We'll see if Kerry Baskin's all-time record will be in jeopardy. I'm sure the eight in front of Lobo are looking over their shoulders at this point. She's got the basketball turnaround jumper baseline, gets the home roll. And now it seems that the Georgetown pressure defense against Lobo has, has kind of fallen by the wayside. Right now they're just playing an ISO, set up Lobo on the box, give her the pass, and it's a one-on-one. -on -one. having sort of a field day right now. Bricks with the air ball. And Rosati runs for UConn. Barubi takes the rebound away and gets the putback. Showing some tremendous athletic ability. Coach Nat has to call another timeout. His team is not fired up. They're not getting to the loose balls. It's too easy for Connecticut. Too much size, and when you got chip beans two or three times in a row down the floor, as the Huskies have been able to put together, that's making it a little easier. Lobo with 14 points. 10 rebounds today. You'll see right here we talked about you cannot play Rebecca Lobo in one-on-one. -on -one. She will just take it to the basket. And here you have that situation. This time she turns to the baseline, gets the kind roll. And it's tough for uh, the Hoyas to try and contend with that and this second chance opportunities. Well, you got to box out, and Carla Barubi with a great athletic move, tips it up, tips it to herself, and finds the open area. It's those type of plays that a coach doesn't like to see. If you miss a shot, that's okay. If you, if, you know, for lack of technical, it's okay, but when you're not hustling, when you're not getting to the ball, when you're not doing the things you've been taught over and over again, that's when the coach calls a timeout. And he has had to uh, spend a couple of them here in the first half. And one of the reasons you see uh, UConn putting it together here early on in the Big East schedule is because they played some monsters in December. Well, the, the win at Auburn was tremendous. And then the next week, they came back to back and they beat a Virginia team who is always tough. Played Stanford at Stanford and lost, which, you know, is nothing to be ashamed of. But this Connecticut team, by beating number four at the time Auburn and number eight at the time Virginia, gave them some national exposure. And Lobo with a well-deserved break right now over on the Husky bench. Connecticut 12-0 run in the last three minutes. It's a very explosive team. And the defense right now from UConn, uh, the Hoyas seem to be having some problems figuring it out. Rick's trying to direct traffic. Shot clock down to 13. I was about to say, we haven't had to mention the shot clock all No, not with Georgetown. All day. Their pace is usually up and down the floor. Good head fake from Hanrahan, but the shot won't go. And better running the break. Nikia Rick handcuffed because she has two fouls. Very smart play not to get the foul right there. I was going to say better used about every part of that rim to get it to fall. Connecticut now on a 14-0 run. Georgetown looking for someone to pick up the slack. 
the force. No good. Walters with the rebound. And it's 6-3. Uh, Banya Cook is actually that was the force is taking a shot, and they're not going to have any rebounders. Baruby, nice pass to Walters. Freshman to freshman inside. Looks like, like right now, Connecticut is just doing what they want at will, making the good passes and finding the open player. Georgetown has missed their last six field goal attempts. And the zone makes it very difficult for Nadir Ricks to create. Walters altering the shot from Candace Steyer and out of bounds off of UConn. See the Connecticut bench giving their support to the players on the court right now. Let's see, if she's 6'7", with her arms straight up, what do you think? They're going to make her about eight feet you Somewhere shoot over? in that neighborhood. Yeah, I'd say that uh, will alter your shot a little yes. bit. In an exclusive neighborhood, I might add. Not too many other folks are going to get up that high. Julie Miles going to try inside. Goes to the right hand. And Ruby has the rebound. It's too bad they don't have a stack for shots altered. Julie Miles with a good move, but... She knows she needs to create something. It's very difficult right now because they're frustrated. 0 for 7 in their last field goal attempts. A very oh. frenetic pace here in the first half. Walters. The hook shot, no good. And Miles has to kick it out to Hammerhand. She's short off the front of the rim. She has not been able to get on track here in the first half. Wow. 30 to 16, Connecticut over Georgetown and rebound alone. And I recall at one point it was 10 apiece. So Connecticut has gone on to dominate on the glass. And a lot of that is because I can't think of the time when Georgetown has had a second shot, uh, second shot chance. Walters over Miles, good. Is signaling to Coach Oriemma, I think that he, she wants to come out of the game. Sumeo, another freshman, is waiting on the sidelines to come in at the next dead ball. Playing under some difficult circumstances with the uh, injury to her ribs, she's got 10 points and a gutty performance. Certainly a noble effort for this freshman, and the crowd recognizes that and gives her a big hand. You can see she's in a bit of pain, uh, struggling for some breath right now on the sideline. Not bad numbers here in the first half. And there's a jumper, good for two, from Christine Sacco. Well, that just ended a 20 to nothing run. Whoa. All alone underneath is Sumail. Another freshman, 6'4", from New York. In fact, Miss New York basketball. Easy break. Have a Miss New York basketball, Miss Massachusetts basketball. And the foul against UConn, 1-1, one one, will send Trisha Pendergast to the foul line. Matlock picking up the foul with a minute nine left in the first half. I don't think I'd like to be in the uh, locker room with uh, Coach Pat Knapp. We may be able to hear him out here, as a matter of fact. You know, they started out well, and perhaps this very, very talented Connecticut team is just overpowering them. Julie Miles with the nice turnaround. She's got four points for the Hoyas. Huskies, incidentally, have set a record for most points scored in the first half this season for a Big East team. Breaking their own mark of 54 points they scored earlier in the season. But right now, with, with uh, All-American Rebecca Lobo on the bench, this is perhaps a time for Georgetown to just cut into this slight lead, cut in slightly to this lead. There's a three by Trisha Pendergast. Well, you hear coaches talk a lot about the last couple of minutes of the first half and the first few minutes of the second half being crucial. They're certainly starting to hit better from the outside here in the last couple of moments. And that would be an encouraging carryover for the Hoyas. Maybe gain a little bit of momentum in during the locker room. Weber hits better. That shot won't go. Rebound of force. Under 15 now to go in the first half. 
Three-pointer is no good, and Mayo has the board. What kind of fool would open a store that just sells darts? Dave Courier, that's who. Come to Good Darts and see Dave. You know, maybe Dave isn't so dumb after all. Good Darts also carries a full line of pool cues and supplies. Stop by and test out the new fiberglass and graphite cues from Qtech and traditional wood models by McDermott and Players. Good Darts, 2134 Generals Highway next to McDonald's across from the Annapolis Mall. Good Darts, don't fool around with your fun. I'm Dr. Charles Thorne. Did you know a properly aligned spine is the key to health and vitality? Let's compare the human body to another precisely tuned instrument, the concert harp. The slightest alteration to its graceful frame noticeably affects the quality of its tone. Likewise, injury, stress, or disease can alter the spine's alignment and disrupt the body's natural harmony. Gentle chiropractic care restores the spine's natural alignment. Restore the quality of your performance to concert level and enjoy the applause. Come to Thorne Clinic. You want to get close to the bullet? Come with me! This is everything you need to know about the bullet. You want to know the whys and the why not? Come here! This is Dave Dupree and this is Bullet Jam. Bullet's Jam Session, Monday nights at 7 on HTS. HTS College Basketball. Go for it all. We got it all. HTS College Basketball. Go for it all, because we got it all. Check your local listings for teams and times. Welcome back to Gampel Pavilion at halftime, 59-33. Connecticut showing why they are the eighth-ranked team in the nation. Well, my partner Sherry Levin now with some insight on the Big East Conference. The Big East women's program this year is really going to be exciting to watch because there are a lot of teams that have been floundering in the middle that are now going to rise to the top and teams that have previously been on top are going to find themselves in the middle or even below. One team to watch is Connecticut. They're the conference preseason favorite. They have the preseason player of the year favorite in Rebecca Lobo. At 6'4", Rebecca can dominate any game. She is very strong offensively. She moves extremely well for someone with her height. Last year, we even saw her go outside and shoot some threes. So she's the biggest player that Connecticut is really going to have to look for. They have another freshman in Carla Berube, the Massachusetts State Player of the Year last year. I've been told the player to watch in terms of athletic ability, versatility, and really has an exciting scoring ability to her team. One player I also didn't mention yet was Jen Rosati. Uh, one of the freshman picks last year. She's an outstanding point guard. And she's really going to be the one that controls the offense and will have to get the ball to players like Rebecca Lobo and Carla Berube, and then they have Tanya Boone. So Connecticut goes deep, and they have some experience. So Connecticut's the team to beat. Coach Bob Foley has a, a team that's near the top. He has four seniors in the starting lineup, Stephanie Gocha, Lucy Fontanella, Jen Mead, and Sonia Lewis. And those four players have really developed in the past three years. And I think with their ability to control the game, to really show some leadership, I think he's going to have quite a good season. Uh, last year they finished up a season that could have been miserable. They upset Georgetown in the second round. They upset Connecticut in the third round to get to the finals and that was what really gave them some spirit, some emotion and all of a sudden they ended up with turning a season that could have been very disappointing and making it something that was very exciting. Seton Hall is actually another team that we should see make some waves in the Big East. Uh, Coach Phyllis Mangina has some great returning players. Jody Brooks, 
we should look for at point guard. Averaged about 15 points per game last year. And Don Johnson is just a terror on the board. They have their sights set on the top of the Big East. Pittsburgh finished 10 and 8 last year, and for them, I think that was a good season. Donna is a great player. She's very athletic, she's very versatile, and she can make things happen for them. Jill Colabrese is another player for them to watch. I don't know if they have the depth at this point to really buy for the top spot. Georgetown, Sweet 16 last year, the best year in their, their history. Coach Knapp has lost his best shooter, his best scorer in Chris Whitfield, his best leading rebounder in Lee Wilson, and his best assist maker. And what that has done is left him with a team of a lot of good players, but no stars. One player to look for is Nadira Ricks. She will lead the team. Uh, she has the most experience and I think averaged about 12 points per game. Miami does not have a returning player that averaged more than five points. Coach Fern Labati now has a situation where Vicki Plowden has graduated, Della Reese Wilson has graduated. Some of their biggest players, their best players are gone. Maybe she's going to be looking forward to the future where these young players will now build a program. So I think it will be interesting for Miami. Villanova and St. John's have had days of glory in the past, and I think they're still struggling to get those back. Syracuse has a new coach in Mariana Freeman. Mariana Freeman comes from Iowa, which is one of the top programs in all of women's basketball. The return of Holly Oslander, 6'5 center. A couple years ago, she had reconstructive knee surgery, but she's back and I think playing with a lot more confidence. We saw some signs of brilliance from her. Boston College now with Kathy Inglis as the head coach became nationally known when her Vermont University team did not lose a regular season game in two years. Their program will have an enthusiasm because it's a new system, because it's a new coach, and other teams are going to be start to feel them out, but I think there'll be some excitement at the bottom. And at Camp Hell Pavilion, 59 to 33, our score with UConn in front. They've been controlling the boards and running the break extremely well. The Hoyas with some hope after hitting some threes down the stretch in the first half. They'll have to try and carry that over into the second stanza to make up the difference. Back with more after this. Sons of Georgetown. Georgetown University, the nation's oldest Catholic university. Highly selective, international, prestigious. A spirited, caring community founded on the principles of undergraduate education. Ever growing through the professional studies of business, ethics, law, and medicine. Honored with three Rhodes Scholars in 1992, the home of nationally recognized professors. We have to you know how fast your business is changing. But do you know which airline is changing faster than any other? Building new terminals. Enriching its frequent flyer program. Forming a global alliance. Making so many improvements, it can truly be said. In the history of aviation, no other airline has made so many changes so fast. All of it's for you. Of all the fine German engineering in a new Volkswagen, there's one advance not found on any other car. A device small enough to fit in the palm of your hand, but big enough to change the next 10 years of your life. It's a warranty. The longest limited powertrain warranty in the world. One part of Volkswagen Protection Plus. It's sort of like having headlights that see all the way into the future. Volkswagen, the most loved and protected cars in the world. Time now for the Big East Halftime Report, sponsored by Volkswagen, the most loved cars in the world. And the Big East Player of the Week, Jody Brooks, putting up some impressive numbers for Seton Hall. Best, she netted a career-high 31 points in the St. John's overtime victory and had 18 points, 4 assists, and 3 steals in that upset over UConn. And the Rookie of the Week, Mandy Saunders, not only scoring, but distributing the basketball as well. Putting points on the board, double figures in eight of their 11 games. She was also had 24 points and 12 for 12 from the foul line in a victory over St. John's. Okay, heading to our standings, 4-0 and 3-0, the only undefeated is Providence and Pitt right now. Early indications right here that the Big East Conference is going to be very competitive by the end of the season. And there you see the uh, second half of the standings. Georgetown looking for the win today. 
Upcoming games in Big East, Miami at Pittsburgh. Villanova travels to St. John's at Syracuse, hosting Seton Hall. Two o'clock starts on Sunday. Wednesday, Pittsburgh's at Georgetown. Providence will be hosting Syracuse. BC is at St. John's. And Villanova will be hosting the UConn Huskies. Later in the week, Miami at Seton Hall Thursday. And then on Saturday, Georgetown at Syracuse. And the Express will be hosting the Hurricanes. Checking on the league leaders in scoring, Kerry Curran taking over for Sarah Bain at BC. Senior Kerry Curran has really taken over the responsibility. Usually we'll see her in assists, but now leads in scoring. Reboundings, you see Lobo at four and Shimona Marable doing a good job for Seton Hall. Well, no surprise there. Seton Hall always with a very aggressive, strong rebounding team. The assist leaders, how about the rookie up on top of this one, Mandy Saunders? Not only is she scoring, but she's distributing the basketball to appropriate people, 4-0 for Providence. The women's game of the week next Sunday, Villanova at Boston College will be at the Conti Forum. Check your local listings for that game. And we are at halftime at Gampel Pavilion, the Big East game of the week. Back with stats and highlights right after this. The thrill, the spirit, the excitement, the pride, the officially licensed team rings from Balfour. Each ring is crafted to the exacting standards of each league, and all are made in America of beautiful Balfour Celestrium for the look and feel of real gold or silver. Handcrafted by the same master jewelers who created league championship rings and trophies for decades. When you call to order, we'll send you a picture of your ring and a sizer to ensure your team ring fits perfectly. So call the number on your screen to order your team ring. There's no payment required now. You'll be billed just $19 prior to the shipment of your ring. Then, four more monthly payments of only $19 each. Enjoy years of showing your team pride right at hand. Call now, 1-800-547-9400. 1-800-547-9400. HTS College Basketball. Go for it all, because we the West Virginia and St. Bonaventure clash. Then, mighty Cincinnati battles Alabama-Birmingham. It all begins Sunday afternoon at 4.30 on HTS. Join HTS's Smokin' Al Cokin for the Caps Report. One half hour before every Caps game on HTS. For the most exciting plays of the week, tune your tube to HTS's Week in Review with George Johnson as he brings you the freshest regional sports wrap-up around. That's HTS's Week in Review, Fridays at 6.30, only on HTS. Be there. Welcome back to Gampel Pavilion in Storrs, Connecticut. The Huskies in charge in the first half, 59 to 33, and one of the reasons why we will see in the numbers coming up the statistics from the first half. Shooting percentage, Georgetown obviously would like to be a little higher than that. At one point early in the game, they were at 50%. Dropped down to 33 when Connecticut went the other way, up to 62%. Big difference right there. The threes have been there for Connecticut, and that's taken some of the pressure off of uh, the inside play, and Georgetown Hanrahan's had a tough time from behind the arc. See the rebounds, another key statistic here. Connecticut 31, Georgetown 19, almost double. A lot of those because Georgetown's just not getting a second chance. And the bench scoring, you see the depth coming through for the Huskies. And a lot of that freshmen and sophomores coming into the game. Well, what you see is Connecticut, big players coming up with big plays when they need to. Tanya Boone came in, she scored some quick points. Then Kara Walter scored some quick points. Ricks with nine points, but she was limited somewhat with two early fouls on the defensive end. We'll see if she can pick up the pace. And then Pendergast with seven for the Hoyas. Lobo with the double-double in the first half, and Walters with the gutsy performance with the, uh, the cracked ribs. And then some guards getting some scoring action, which is a good sign for Connecticut. Let's check out some of the highlights uh, from that first half of play, and it was a big one for Rebecca Lobo. 
Rebecca Lobo here. You see a one-on-one -on -one clear out. Takes it to the baseline side for the easy hoop. Gets the roll. Another thing that Rebecca does is intimidate on defense. You see here, Georgetown always looking to run. The DR Ricks finds the seam between Elliott and Lobo, but Lobo stays with the play, controls her body, gets a piece of the ball, and what's the best thing? She recovers the ball after that block. 43 blocks this season, she leads the Big East. For Connecticut to be successful, they have to take some of the pressure off of Lobo. She was double teamed, which left an easy open for Kara Walters as a freshman, giving a gutsy performance with a uh, fractured rib. Here you see, look, Georgetown knows where Rebecca is. A couple players right around her. And that leaves the middle wide open for Kara Walters. Nice little right-handed hook for two of her 10 points in the first half. Depending on the lead, it'll be interesting to see if Kara will get in the game or not. They might want to rest that cracked rib. And there you see Walters over on the sideline. Nadira Rick's going to have to turn it up a notch in the second half in order to bring the Hoyas back. And how about that for the Huskies? 9-0 and when leading at the break. Tough to beat them in this building. The Hoyas did it last year. And Weber, good hustle to create the turnover. Five turnovers. UConn in their home whites, the Hoyas in their traveling blues. Elliott, and she is tied up underneath, and a foul will be called. Talk about that steal by Pam Weber. Coach Ariana said that Pam does so many intangible things for this team. She's a tremendous leader, emotional leader, and keeps them pretty steady. Now he needs her to start doing some tangible things. And immediately one of the starters for Georgetown has to head to the bench. That's Jenny Jacobson with her third personal. She's replaced by Julie Miles. Elliott fouled on the shot. She'll get two. We are in stores, Connecticut, in Gampel Pavilion. Sold out the first time that's happened for a Big East regular season matchup. And Elliott rattles that one home. She now has eight points. Ricks, Miles, Vanya Cook, Hendergast, and Hammerhead in the lineup for UConn. Boone, Weber, Lobo, Rosati, and Elliott right for UConn. Baseline jumper, Pendergast, no good. Pendergast with a quick shot, a lefty shot, but no second chance. No offensive boards for Georgetown. Lobo kicks it out. Weber sights up a three, no good. And good hustle from Pendergast to take the rebound away from Elliott. Georgetown looking to run, looking for the break. She had the shot. Surprised she didn't put that one up. She was left alone for a moment. Lobo with the rebound off the cook miss. You see Cook not really comfortable pivoting to her left. What's the key here now for the Hoyas in order to try and turn this round? Obviously scoring points, one of them, but... Well, they have to start really putting some defensive pressure on Connecticut, try to shake some things up, maybe get some turnovers. Connecticut running their offense to the team. Back screen, Tanya Boone wide open. Boone has eight. One of nine Huskies in the scoring column today. Julie Miles outside jumper, she nails it. Miles with six. Almost double her average of 3.9 points. She's one of the co-captains for the Hoyas. And also, as we've just seen, one of their biggest outside threats. Great look on the baseline, Lobo to Elliott. And Jamel can't get it to fall, but she will go to the line. Rebecca saying right there, oh, you blew my assist. <laughs> nice little no-look no pass. There it is, right over the back. Jamel just a strong player. She even got that shot up. Fouls on Hanrahan, and that is her third as well. So Hanrahan and Jacobson now with three apiece. And Elliott hits the free throw. Jacobson comes back in at this point. Coach Knapp has to go with his money players regardless of the foul situation. You have some good three-point shooters 
for Georgetown. They just haven't been going in this year. Elliott now three of three for the line with 10 points. She is one of uh, the second team all Big East performers in a Lobo with a huge block. Kind of snuck up right in the back. Once again, she got control of the ball. That's a block and a steal. Rosati with Rick's way out on her. Georgetown playing in man to man defense right now. Boone will put it up, no good. Rebound, Vanya Cook. Now, this is a time where they have to turn this around and score now. They played a good defensive series, now they have to capitalize. Cut into this lead. Bounce pass inside, double team, Miles, no good, Lobo with a rebound. Rebecca playing like an All-American. Rosati thinks about the three, goes baseline, nice dish to Elliott. Boone can't finish it with the three. Hammerhan, she's fouled by Weber, the hold along the baseline. Pam Weber out of Hollidaysburg, Pennsylvania. Last year, she was first in a Husky assist. Now let's take a look at the defense of Rebecca Lobo. This is her 40, I believe, fourth block of the season. You see that? She comes from behind, sneaks up on Jacobson. Here she follows the ball, gets the rebound. She's doing it all. Such a presence inside is Rebecca Lobo. Well, the opposition's first thought always has to be Rebecca Lobo. Hanrahan short on the three. There is Lobo inside, spinning, double team, kicking it out to Barubi. Just about everybody touching it. And then better short on the shot, Lobo with the foul. A little uncharacteristic for Rebecca. Didn't really have too much of a chance at getting that rebound. You talked about Coach Knapp saying it's difficult to stop her. You just have to hope to limit her. He calls her a legitimate All-American candidate this season. Ricks with a good screen on top. Tries to hit Miles underneath, and that's out of bounds off of Lobo. Coach Oriem has said his team has been a little flat the past couple of days. They've all they've been doing is basketball. You know, they don't have classes. They stay in a hotel. They play basketball. And I think perhaps they worried a little bit too much because that's the only focus they have. He's looking forward to getting back to school and regular lifestyle. Another block for Lobo. And that pass out of the reach of Jamel Elliott and out of bounds. We've got a break in the action. UConn 64, Georgetown 35, back after these messages. Ladies and gentlemen, You know how fast your business is changing. But do you know which airline is changing faster than any other? Improving schedules. Modernizing its fleet. Forming a global alliance. Making so many improvements, it can truly be said. In the history of aviation, no other airline has made so many changes so fast. And all of it's for you. You don't think a car can change your attitude? Watch. Take this guy, give him a probe, lose the sweater, change the hair, voila! Or her. Give her an Escort GT, lose the glasses, make over city, and bingo! Oh, this guy needs a Ranger bad. Let's do that grunge thing, and off you go. A lot of work here, definitely Mustang. Lose the pocket protector, heck, lose the whole outfit, and throw that man a wave. Ford, serious attitude adjustment. Back at Gampel Pavilion, where Rebecca Lobo having a great day. You see one of her five blocks today. Blocks it to a teammate, that's one. Get to the first half. There's another, another look at that actually. You see how she stays right with the play. She has a great ability to control her basket. I was gonna say very quick off the feet as you see going for the triple double. She's got two thirds of it right now. There's another. 
make it 47 for the season. Ranks among the uh, Division I players in blocks. That's fourth in the nation. After this game, she may move up. And a foul will be called against Georgetown. Pretty good way to pad your stats, too, when you can pick up a block and a steal on the same play. You'll be hard-pressed to find a better venue for women's basketball in the entire nation than right here, as you see. UConn, one of the top four in season tickets, and today sold out. The second time that has happened, and the first for a Big East women's game. Second chance for Barubi is good. And quickly on the break and a miss from Pendergast. That's one of the things that's been missing from their arsenal today. Are that's the easy the, chances. Well, the easy chances they have to make. It's one thing to have the easy chance, you just have to cash in on it. Barubi. A little flat on that shot, but she follows it. And Rosani is there to pick up the loose ball. And it's starting to unravel for Georgetown. Barubi! The freshman with a three-point opportunity. They're loving it in stores. Well, Connecticut has an average of 19.9 scoring margin. Looks like that average is going to increase a little bit after today's game. When they get it rolling, they have a people coming in off the bench and just keep it going. And for lack of a better term, we'll have to get the SID's office to get us a name for the big three, but all three of them right now in double figures today, Barubi Walters and, of course, Lobo. And there's Barubi finishing off the three-point effort. It looks like Kara Walters is coming back in the game. Ovation for Lobo as she heads to the sideline. Connecticut sitting back in the zone. Dear Ricks has been pretty quiet here in the second half. Shot clock is at 15. LaForce, nice pass to Miles. In and out. They found the opening in the zone. Got a good shot, but again, things are not falling. Elliott's fouled on the second attempt. Kind of mad at herself. I think that she didn't finish it off the first time around, but another nice look from Barubi. Well, if you don't succeed the first time, you just try again. She stayed right with it. Probably, probably a shot that she normally would make. Came a little short on it, but stayed right with it. I was going to say the foul going against Julie Miles, and there you see Shea Matlock checking in for UConn. Elliott having a good day at the line. Three freshmen on the court for Connecticut. Ruby, Matlock, and Walters. A sophomore in Jamel Elliott, and a junior in Pam Weber. Elliott with a second opportunity. And she gets them both. 12 now for Elliott. Four Huskies in double figures. Miles over Walters. And body sprawling for the loose ball. It will go to Yukon. Good hustle on both sides. Certainly no lack of hustle for either team. Poyos will put on the full court pressure. Kathleen Deshays now in defensively against Weber. Deshays, along with uh, Sacco, LaForce, Miles, as Barubi takes a jumper on the baseline, no good. And number 45, Mike Klaus in the lineup for the Hoyas. Miles for three. Julie Miles, the senior, is taking the last three Georgetown shots. And Walters chases down the loose ball. Unfortunately, she's missed the last three Georgetown Hoyer shots. They will keep after it, that's for sure. Yes, there's not a bad shot in the Georgetown arsenal. They just throw them up. Coach, Coach Knapp was talking uh, about the fact there certainly isn't any problem with the effort. The, uh, the team is still very positive, despite the fact that they've started out 0-3 in the conference. He even doesn't want to think of the record. He just wants to try to get a win. They've got a score. They just can't seem to do it. 
We've got a foul underneath. And it will go against Georgetown's Julie Miles. Talk about some of the great players that this Georgetown team has had in the past. What they're doing, Nikki Reed, teaching school in New York City. She was the all-time leading assist. Leanie Wilson, all-time leading rebounder, is playing basketball in France. And uh, Chris Whitfield is playing basketball in Germany. All-time leading scorer. And the Big East Player of the Year last season. Hoy is gaining some national prominence with a stunning upset of Penn State. Nice move by Barubi. Upset of Penn State in the tournament last year and then falling to Virginia in the Sweet 16. UConn settling into that 2-3. Cook, nice spin move around Walters. Lobo with another rebound. Once again, the good move, but not the finish. Matlock, no good. Walters, second effort there. So many weapons on the offensive glass for the Huskies. Huskies have one of the tallest front lines in the country. If you put in freshman 6'4", Sue Mayo, with Walters and Lobo, they average 6'3 and a half. And there's a block for Kara Walters. Walters snuffing out the effort of Jenny Jacobson. And quickly the other way, Weber. She's very good at picking and choosing the spots where she'll put it up. And she hits the J for the Huskies. Well, today she's definitely come through with a lot of tangible things. Yeah, one of those role players that seems to find what the team needs and gets it done in a foul against the Huskies. That'll go against Walters. Kara came down with the arm that time. It's her second foul of the game. You talk about Connecticut's rankings. They are eighth right now, but as of tomorrow, the rankings will change. And since they had that loss at Seton Hall, you imagine they might fall out of the top 10. But as we mentioned earlier, after the Virginia win, they got as high as four. Vanya Cook. Hits on the first. Good rotation on that foul shot. And she will get a second effort. And she hits. We've got a break in the action. 75-37 Connecticut. Back after these words from our local stations. Hi, I'm Jim Moray. CNN Showbiz Today will spend a week behind the scenes of TriStar Pictures' new movie, Philadelphia, coming to theaters January 14th. And I'm Lauren Sidney. We'll talk with Philadelphia stars Tom Hanks and Denzel Washington, plus hear from Oscar-winning director Jonathan Demme. You'll get the first preview of this much-talked-about film on a special week of Showbiz Today. January 10th through the 14th, 5.30 Eastern Time on CNN. Couldn't you just go for some authentic buffalo-style chicken wings right now? With lots of sauce, blue cheese, and celery sticks, too. From Wings to Go, there's one near you. South Baltimore on South Charles Street, Brooklyn Park on Ritchie Highway, Glen Burnie on Ritchie Highway, Pasadena on Mountain Road, Severna Park on Benfield, Laurel on Route 198, and Annapolis on Bay Ridge Road. Wings to Go, open late at a location near you. This copyrighted telecast is produced by authority of the Big East Conference and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Big East Conference is prohibited. We mentioned how difficult it is for opponents to come in this gym and win. Home sweet home for the Huskies. Since they've played here, 60 games, 48 12. 25 and 5, I believe, is the number against Big East opponents. When you've got over 7,000 people rooting you on, that's plenty incentive as we get a look at Carol Walters. This is certainly a different team 
that have played against Seton Hall the other night and lost, where they just came out flat. They weren't ready to play, and they were surprised. I think uh, it's, it probably surprised a lot of the teams around the league as well that Seton Hall was playing with them and, and beat them the way they did uh, down in New Jersey. And I think it says something, too, about the, the depth of the league. You're talking about Seton Hall, Providence, Pittsburgh, the Huskies, and Miami playing well early on. That's four or five teams with a legitimate shot at the tournament championship in the automatic bid. Not only that, but of course, more at-large berths in the NCAA tournament this year as the field goes to 64 teams. Good news for a lot of Big East teams. The past couple of years, they've had some great programs and they've gotten edged out. Good feed inside Lobo. With the nice finish. Credit Pam Weber with a nice pass inside to get her the basketball. And Lobo with the head fake, froze the defense. And then with the follower jumper. Nice fake from Cook, but the shot won't go. Cook seems to have that nice spin move into the center, but she's not finishing the play. Both teams, they're big people doing very well with the head fakes underneath. Well, this certainly won't win you many ball games. Georgetown, one for 15, seven. Is that correct? Seven percent. I don't think that was the number that Coach Neff drew up on the chalkboard at halftime. Rosati with the break. There's a trailer. Jay Malloff decides to take it, but the trailer, Rebecca Lobo. And that's what you call finishing the play. The Lobo Express is rolling today. Nearing 20 points. Jacobson blocked. That's Shea Matlock, one of the guards, and one of four freshmen for UConn on the preseason first or second teams in the Big East. Connecticut, nine blocks. Lobo and Walters teaming up. And there's Jacobson with the bucket. That's the stat, nine blocks, but you wonder how many times that they altered somebody's shot. Made them change it at the last minute, which caused a mid shot. Should be a good battle in the blocking department this year between Connecticut and Syracuse with Holly Oslander. And the Huskies will maintain possession. Holly Oslander had nine blocks in one game. I think that leads the NCAA. And we've got a stoppage in play. Uh, I believe Jacobson had a contact lens pop out on her. You know, it's amazing. They pop out and how they find them. <laughs> you think about it. Fixing up with uh, some solution there on the sideline. Usually you have people, scroll, you know, crawling around on the floor trying to find it. She must have made a nice catch. Rick's leading the way for Georgetown. Nice pass to Miles and a foul on the penetration from Rick's. Looks like Shea Matlock got her on the outside. A frustrating afternoon for Nadira Ricks and Coach Pat Knapp. We talked about the weather on the East Coast all week. Yesterday was really the only window that the uh, Georgetown team had to get here. And they were talking about, well, what if they drove on uh, Thursday or Friday? And how were they going to get here? But Mother Nature cooperated, and here we are. Shot for Miles. She gets a nice roll. Zadi with a little bit of a different role this season. Last year, they really needed her scoring. This year, she's taking more of a, a leadership role in the sense that she'll distribute the ball more. She won't force shots. That one off her knee, went out of bounds. Georgetown basketball. Ariema looking for a foul. Connecticut's 10th turnover of the game. Still below their 22 turnover average. But back to Jen, she's really an emotional lift for this team. Does a lot of things really well. Miles missing on the jumper from the elbow. It's a nice luxury that they have too as Barubi takes it all the way and off the glass and in. See, that's what you can't understand on defense. How can a player take it full length of the court, you're waiting there on defense, and yet go in untouched? Miles kicks it out to Pendergast. Deflected by Lobo. 
Now we've got a foul underneath. I think that's going to be on Luke. Yeah, that's going to go on Tanya. I think Kara had the good block, but Tanya had the wrist. So a chance for the Hoyas to go to the free throw line. It'll be Julie Miles getting there, and Walters will take a breather. 12 points for the freshman from Hollison, Mass. Coach Rory Emmer with the recruiting got some of the best players in Massachusetts. Kara Walters, Arlo Garubi. Of course, Rebecca Lobo out of Southwick, Massachusetts. We saw Rebecca play in the high school championship. Miles now into double figures with 10 points. Still applying the pressure, double teaming, looking for the turnovers. Quite a luxury, though, when you have the ball handlers that that UConn has, Rosati or Weber running the point, or Matlock coming in, and even Lobo and Elliott pretty good with the handle. Lobo still working hard inside. Give her 20 for the day. And that's a turnaround to the baseline. She has those moves pretty much perfected. She'll turn inside and she'll turn baseline. That was Jen Rosati laid out on the floor for the loose ball. We'll take a break. UConn 83, Georgetown 43. Back after these messages. Of all the fine German engineering in a new Volkswagen, there's one advance not found on any other car. A device small enough to fit in the palm of your hand, but big enough to change the next 10 years of your life. It's a warranty. The longest limited powertrain warranty in the world. One part of Volkswagen Protection Plus. It's sort of like having headlights that see all the way into the future. Volkswagen, the most loved and protective cars in the world. I went out to buy a car and came home with a truck. Everybody saw my new Ford Ranger and said, oh, we in luck. Now I've been driving nonstop because my girl likes to shop and my mom wants a fridge from way over the bridge. And my boss just bought a condo. Better start hauling pronto. My best friend says it's cool. Let's go cruising like we did in school. Don't get me wrong, Ford Rangers, the truck I'm gonna keep. I just wish I could get some sleep. Welcome back to Gamp Health Pavilion in Stores, Connecticut. The Huskies over the Hoyas, 83 to 43, with just under eight minutes to go. And here's the story of today's game. 26% field goal shooting from Georgetown is hurt. And at one point in the second half, it was single figures. And then Rebecca Lobo having an outstanding day, working on a triple-double. Georgetown started out, looked like they were putting things back together, getting the defense, getting some offensive shots to fall. But then this Connecticut team just steamed right over and hasn't looked back since. Full court pressure once again from Georgetown. Rosati able to drill through for the Huskies. Boone. Second time, Boone blocked by LaForce. Loose ball and it's won by Georgetown. Bricks on the brick, four on three, Hoyas. And a turnover, good defense by the Hoyas and then Miles is able to slap it away from behind. Both teams keeping the turnovers down. That's just Georgetown's eighth. Nadir Ricks with that hesitation dribble. LaForce with another block. This time on Elliott. The force got the block, but I think Elliott got the best of it. <laughs> you see that, that out of bounds play seems to be working for Connecticut. Lobo. You wonder at what point Coach Oriem is going to go to his bench. Right now, three, four of the five starters are in the game. Miles kicks it out to the force. You got it. You got it. Yeah. And a 42 point lead with 6.45 to go seems to be pretty much in hand. Lobo with yet another rebound. 
the Huskies looking very impressive. You got to wonder uh, what Seton Hall did to, to beat them the other day. I'm sure the tape of that game will be ma making the rounds of the coaches in the Big East Conference. That would have a pretty high price to it, I would think. <laughs> And it looks like uh, Rebecca Lobo is going to take a seat. 22 points, 17 rebounds. Not bad numbers from the junior All-American candidate. And we mentioned earlier, the last four games she has played, she's been a little bit down, only averaging just under 11 points. So she broke out of that today. Help of the crowd, help of her team. Walters way out on top. Better tries the baseline. Shot won't go. Rebound to Jacobson. Hoyas looking to run. Kick out to Hammerhand just inside the arc. No good. And Better's got a shot. And she's fouled on the take by Colleen Hammerhand. And now we see some more subs coming in for UConn. Rosati and Boone will go out. Pam Weber in your picture comes into the ball game along with Shea Matlock. And number 45 is Maya Clausen coming in for Georgetown as Pendergast heads to the sideline. Connecticut looks most impressive when it's a total team effort, and that was very evident in today's game when one person was slacking off a little bit. Someone else came in off the bench and contributed. And of course, they were led by their All-American, Rebecca Lobo. And she really sets the tone for this team. And a foul as Weber goes left. It will be a reach from behind on a Ricks. Talking about that total team effort, nine players scoring for the Huskies, four of them in double figures today. Third foul on Ricks. Kara Walters. This is on the front end. And the jump ball possession arrow going to the Hoyas. Georgetown on the verge of their lowest scoring total for this season. They had just 62 points and a loss to Notre Dame. They lost uh, December 30th, 62 to 83. Shooting a mere three for 25. Second half, 12%. Ricks, the runner, no good. Walters with the rebound, has it knocked away by LaForce. Ricks scoops it up. White. And out of bounds to the Huskies. And the dear Rick showing that frustration. Just can't seem to get an opening. Tough to do near that hoop when you've got Carol Walters in there at six foot seven. She'll cut down on a lot of angles. Kathleen Deshay is replacing Ricks in the Georgetown lineup. Huskies the preseason selection to win the Big East, according to the coaches. As better connects. Carol Walters cleared out the space for Kim. Hanrahan, short on the three. Husky still looking to push it. Elliott with the bounce pass inside. Walters, strong move to the hoop. Kara's one of those players that's very coachable. She just has a terrific attitude. One of the last players after practice on the court every day. Good hustle, and we've got a whistle and a foul. That one will go against UConn. And the one and one for Kathleen Deshaies. Foul, I believe, is on Pam Weber. More substitutions as Matlock and Walters head to the sideline. Checking in, number 20, one of the crowd favorites, Colleen Healy. Colleen and Tanya Boone were just two of the people left from that final four team. Out of Wyndham, Connecticut. Elliott, Better, Weber, Healy, and Sue Mayo in the lineup for UConn. As Deshays hits on the front end. She is joined by Sacco, along with Jacobson. 45 is Maya Clausen. And Abijo, 
a Hawkeye is in there for Georgetown as well, number 33. Fawson gets it the second time around. First down basket by Maya Fawson. Better, and she is fouled on the drive to the hoop. Good opportunity for some of the younger players to get some experience. Klaus and a freshman, as is uh, a Hunkai in there for Georgetown. In fact, four freshmen there because Sacco and Deshaies also a frosh. And just an explosion by the Huskies here in the second half. And a, quite a letdown by Georgetown. Better hits the first. It doesn't get any easier for Georgetown. They're going to have Pittsburgh right next game. Undefeated still in the conference, and perhaps the Huskies sending a message maybe to the rest of the league that they are back after the loss to Seton Hall. And after she makes the shot, better checks out another freshman. Missy Rose, 5'10 from Scranton, Pennsylvania, checking in the lineup. Yesterday, Jamel Elliott said that their team is ready to play. They just had a letdown against Seton Hall. We'll come back after that during the game. But they worked really hard the past two games. Jacobson finds Sacco. She hits the jumper. I'll tell you, the Georgetown big people can let it fly from outside. Both Sacco and Miles, very good outside shooters. Georgetown still with the Hawking player to player defense. This is Rose to Healy. Six seconds on the shot clock. Elliott no good. And Deshaies is able to run down the loose ball and Elliott will be called for the personal foul. That's what we call the old compound fracture. You miss the shot. You go after the ball and make a foul. <laughs> but Jamal has had a superb game. Her turn to get the good rest. And this, this crowd here in stores is very knowledgeable basketball crowd. And a lot of them uh, sticking around to the finish. Well, they recognize good talent. Deshaies is back to the foul line. And Healy is there for the rebound. Pam Weber, the remaining player with a lot of experience. She's the only starter in the game with three freshmen and Colleen Healy. Shot clock down to five as Weber takes it in strong, misses. And we've got a jump ball as Miles is tied up by Mayo. We've got a break in the action, UConn. 91, Georgetown 48, back after these words from our local stations. It's the 25th anniversary Subaru year-end clearance. That means unbeatable savings on today's value leader legacy. Subaru has told its dealers the 93s must go. Right now, choose any selected front or all-wheel drive legacy and save from two to $3,000. Sedan, wagon, they all gotta go. And with savings up to $3,000, they're going fast. Use the cash as a down payment. With up to $3,000 savings, it's easy to drive home one of the most reliable, dependable cars ever made. Legacy, hurry to your Subaru dealer. With up to $3,000, you can't afford not to buy America's value leader. Subaru. HTS College Basketball. Go for it all, because we got it all. West Virginia and St. Bonaventure clash. Then mighty Cincinnati battles Alabama-Birmingham. It all begins Sunday afternoon at 4.30 on HTS. Women's College Hoop. No one gives you more than HTS. Two perennial powers clash. Virginia and North Carolina battle for ACC supremacy. It all happens Wednesday night, live at 7, only on HTS. As we mentioned at the top of the show, the first of eight regular season matchups we'll have for you, the Big East game of the week. Villanova at BC next week, followed by UConn. We'll be back at Gambell Pavilion hosting Miami. Then the Huskies on the road at Providence. And Providence at St. John's February 6th. Check your local listings for those games. Big East tidbit for you. 
largest margin of victory ever, oddly enough. The Huskies on the losing end against St. John's. We've got just under two and a half to go. And again, Sacco drilling one from the outside. Well, the player from uh, Norwood, New Jersey, just may get a little bit more playing time after these past couple of shots. She seems to be the only one finding the bottom of the net. Georgetown, 5 for 31 this half, 16% from the floor. Nice running one-hander from number 31, Carla Berube. Turnaround jumper is good from Akankai. The Huskies will go to three and one in the league. Georgetown will fall to 0-4, as we mentioned. Still two unbeatens in the conference. Pittsburgh and Providence. Pittsburgh, of course, with the outstanding player, John Humerick. Both of them not shy about putting it up from outside the arc either. They're using the three-pointer. And they have turned those into lethal weapons this year. And for Providence, we got a number of familiar names. Lucy Fontanella, Stephanie Gocha, Sonia Lewis, and a couple of new faces. I tell you, you talk a lot about this UConn freshman class, not a bad one at PC either. Of course, Mandy Saunders, we showed you at halftime, the rookie of the week. <laughs> Kathleen Deshays at the point for Georgetown. And Georgetown will fall to 0 and 4 in the Big East. Not a victory yet, 94. But they'll go home and try to regroup. They're doing some good things out there. They just need to sustain it. Again, Sacco. No good. Skids off the front of the rim. Down to 30 seconds to go in this one. Impressive afternoon for Rebecca Lobo and her Connecticut teammates. She picks up the double-double to Pace Yukon, and we've got a foul on the shot by a Hunkai. Freshman, six foot from Pennsylvania. And Connecticut certainly has to be happy with their performance. A total team effort. It shows that even a young team, they've rebounded from what was probably a very disappointing loss. And it's a very convincing loss by Seton Hall. First shot is no good. Sellout crowd here at Gampel Pavilion, and they have seen an impressive Husky showing today as a Hawkeye hits on the second. Problem is now, these fans are expecting this performance <laughs> every game now from the Huskies, and when they fall short a little bit, they're very disappointed. Once you put your head above the clouds, you really have to put a lot of effort into maintaining it. And Weber is triple teamed on the sideline, and she will head to the free throw line. George now foul number 33, Adil Ahonkai. Ahonkai picks up the foul. That is her first. And there you see the All-American candidate, Rebecca Lobo. Her parents come to every game, along with her grandmother, give her support. Grandmother said, I'll talk with her if she doesn't have a good game. <laughs> Pam Weber is four of five from the line. Looking for her eighth point, and she gets it. steal by Healy as we're down now under five seconds to go. The crowd counts it down, another UConn victory. <laughs> Coach Gino Oriema picking up another W. UConn 95, Georgetown 54. Back to wrap, wrap things up after these words from our local stations.
I'm Dr. Charles Thorne. Did you know a properly aligned spine is the key to health and vitality? Let's compare the human body to another precisely tuned instrument, the concert harp. The slightest alteration to its graceful frame noticeably affects the quality of its tone. Likewise, injury, stress, or disease can alter the spine's alignment and disrupt the body's natural harmony. Gentle chiropractic care restores the spine's natural alignment. Restore the quality of your performance to concert level and enjoy the applause. Come to Thorne Clinic. Are you frustrated trying to buy plumbing supplies at your hardware store or lumber yard? At Builders Plumbing Supply and Do-It-Yourself Center, you'll find top quality fixtures, shower doors, whirlpool tubs, toilets, and vanities at affordable prices. There's also plenty of help and planning from our expert staff. Builders Plumbing Supply has more decorator faucets in stock than any store in town and the finest whirlpool tubs in the area. So whether you're building a new home, remodeling, or just fixing things up, come see Builders Plumbing Supply and Do-It-Yourself Center, where everybody gets a great price. Open seven days. And welcome back to Gampel Pavilion, 95-54, to 54, our final score, UConn beating Georgetown. And one of the uh, reasons why, sitting with us now, Rebecca Logbo. Congratulations, Rebecca. Thank you very much. Pretty impressive afternoon for you. Uh, were you guys pretty excited coming into this game after the loss to Seton Hall? Yeah, we were very pumped up coming into the, this game. We knew we had to get back on track, and everyone came out and played really well. And, and the guards just hit their shots outside and um, allowed me to, to get open in the middle. Now, it looked early on they were trying to double and sometimes triple down with the guards, and then the outside shooting came around, and that kind of opened things up for you inside? Oh, absolutely. Uh, our guards were hitting the shots, and they couldn't afford to leave them open anymore. And uh, as soon as they uh, uh, popped out on the outside, I was able to get open on the inside, and the guards did a fabulous job getting me the ball. Okay. Rebecca, the past four games, as we looked at some of your highlights here, you've really been shut down offensively. What was the difference today? Uh, well, I think, um, again, it, they've been packing it in the past few games um, down low and today everyone just stepped up and when I was open they got me the ball and, and I was able to score and I think I just played a little more aggressively and um, looked to score more than, than I had been in the past few games. How do you feel about those double teams and double downs every time you touch the ball? Uh, it's fine as long as our guards keep hitting the shots. I don't care who gets the points as long as we win and uh, it's, it's really going to be tough for them to do that if Jen and Pam and Tanya keep playing the way they play tonight. Well Rebecca, it looks like the team is taking your lead All-American candidate. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us. Rebecca Lobo here. The final score once again, 95 to 54. UConn winning it. For Sherry Levin, I'm Beth Mowens. The preceding has been a presentation of the Big East Conference. You want to get close to the bullet? Come with me.